Hi friends and strangers, welcome back to Pam Shenanigans. Even the main character broke character? The hint of romance. Keyword hint took me by surprise with the second half of the book. Today I'll be talking about my first quarter reads. So that includes what I've read for January, February, and March. To be honest, I haven't been the most diligent when it comes to doing wrap-ups this year but it's okay since I haven't read much either way so which is a shame <laughs> but I'll try harder. Let's talk about a bit of my reading stats using the spreadsheet that I usually update. I was able to read a total of seven books so the tracker usually tracks when I was already able to put a book in this list. It counted the love hypotheses and pucking around. Anyway, I was able to read seven books so far in the first quarter. So that includes a total of 2,050 pages with 18.5 hours listened, then a total of 12 books acquired so far in the first quarter. As you can see here, January, I was able to read two books. February, I was able to read two books as well. And then for March, I was able to read three. My average rating was 3.6. Then in terms of the type of book, I read <laughs> mostly fiction, which is seven books. The shortest book that I read was We Had to Remove This Post because it had 160 pages. The shortest book read in terms of audio was The Overnight Guest with 9 hours of audio. The longest one is Six of Crows with 462 pages. And then the longest book that I read in terms of audio was The House Maid with 9.5 hours listened. Then in terms of genres, um, one of them was contemporary, one was fantasy, three were romance, and two thrillers. Then in terms of the type of book that I read, three of them were ebooks, purely ebooks, two were physical, then two were a mix of ebook and audio or physical and audio. In terms of acquisition of this book, three of them I bought from the bookstore, two were from borrowed from the library, and two were then two were others, meaning this is online. In terms of genre, six of them were adult, then one YA. In terms of publishing year, I was able to read two 2021, three 2022, one 2015, and one 2018. So in short, all backlist titles. Looking at the monthly stats. January, I was able to read two books, which totals to 495 pages, then nine hours listened. I think the one worth noting here is that the books acquired is zero starting January, but when I hit February, <laughs> I was able to acquire 12 books. The pages read were higher than January's, but I read the same amount of books. Then for March, I didn't buy anything. I read three books with a total of 835 pages and 9.5 hours in terms of audiobook lessons. All in all, it's a decent quarterly read. So let's move to all the books that I read for this quarter. Moving to my January reads, first is We Have to Remove This Post. This book dives into the dangers of disturbing content posted in social media not just towards the audience viewing them but also towards the people moderating this content while i wasn't exactly wowed by the book i can sort of relate as someone who works in the digital marketing space. The story is written in a way that the main character, Kaylee, is talking to a lawyer or a representative for 
the lawsuit that the other ex-employees were working on. Kaylee is desperate for a job and needed the money so she signed up to be a content moderator. Moderators are tasked to view disturbing, violent, and offensive content and they get to decide whether to keep this on the platform or not. Dangerous job aside, Kaylee also had to navigate fragile relationships that may or may not be affected by this job. Another disturbing detail about this book is that it happens in real life. Although not exactly as how it happens in this book, there are content moderators around the world that are tasked to evaluate certain content. Moderators who have experienced long-term exposure to disturbing images and videos are dealing with anxiety and paranoid thoughts. I'm also pretty sure that similar to this book, there are ridiculous nuances that need to be followed, content that may be dangerous but would generate clicks and views as long as they fit a certain absurd standard. An example from the book that I'll read. Death threats against a pedophile are allowed. Death threats against a politician are not. A video of a religious zealot blowing themselves up in a daycare center should be removed on the grounds that it's a terrorist propaganda, not because it depicts violence or child abuse. The next book that I read is The Overnight Guest. So this is a promising book that kind of fell short towards the end. I was pretty interested and engrossed in the story given that it was told in different timelines and different perspectives. So from the beginning, I wanted to know more about what happened and how it all connected in the end. But somehow, even the main character broke character and I hate when that happens just for the sake of furthering the plot or for serving a plot twist but one of the things that I liked about this book though is the audiobook narration. So moving to my February reads, the first book that I read for the month was Several People Are Typing and it's a sci-fi contemporary novel that is told entirely through Slack conversations. It's a totally relatable and satirical novel that's mostly about the company employee Gerald whose consciousness was literally uploaded in their workplace Slack while his body was still alive and at home. All while this is happening to Gerald, you'd also get a glimpse of what's happening to other employees through other Slack channels, like how they're dealing with a peer crisis for a client, making copy drafts, gossiping about other employees, finding human connections in a mostly online world and even a possibly sentient slack bot. I admittedly enjoyed this more than I expected. I work in a digital ad agency so there are references here that are pretty on point and very relatable. Kind of gave me flashbacks to be honest. The story was told through slack messages in group chats which was pretty interesting since the story still made sense considering that fact. This book reflects on the mundane things in life as well as the consequential and the existential. The audiobook narration was also on point which added to my enjoyment of this book. The next book that I read was Six of Crows. Now, who hasn't heard of Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo, really? So it's one of those popular must-read young adult fantasy novels that involves a high-stake heist by a crew of misfits. I absolutely loved this book and was not disappointed by all of the hype surrounding it. The world building was well-written and the characters were well-rounded. I love how there's something to hate and to love about each of the characters and this renders them realistic 
optimistic and very relatable. They're totally different from one another, but they somehow complement each other. Each character have motives and goals of their own. All were achievable with the help of the money that they would gain from this heist. I like that the heist showed how vital each of the member was and that the heist could possibly fail if even just one of them were gone. I also like that although the legendary Kaz Brecker seems unbreakable and unyielding, there are moments in the book that shows that he's just human like us after all. The writing is so vivid yet so easy to picture and imagine the setting and the story. It's fast-paced but you'd get well-timed flashbacks to give more context on each character. Character. Another favorite thing about Six of Crows is that the hint of romance. Keyword hint. It perfectly matched the setting and the pace of the book and wasn't dragging unlike other fantasy books that I've read before. Even with just one short romantic line, it got me <laughs> got me kicking my feet in giddiness to be honest. I've borrowed a copy of Crooked Kingdom from Pam of This Book Belongs to Pam and I am hoping to read that this April. Lastly, the books that I've read in March. First one is the third volume of our Not So Lonely Planet Travel Guide. Just to give context on what the series is about. Super serious Asahi Suzumura and laid-back easy-going Mitsuki Sayama might seem like an odd couple but they made a deal. They'll vacation around the world and when they get back to Japan they'll get married. As they travel from country to country the different people, cultures, and cuisine they encounter begin to bring them closer together. After all, they're not just learning about the world, but about themselves too. This volume is just as heartwarming as the previous volumes. We got to meet new characters and explore new countries with these two characters. Although I feel like the first two volumes were stronger in terms of the story, volume three is still a stunning read though. The next book that I read for for March was The Housemaid. So it's a fast-paced and compelling story about Millie, the Winchester's new housemaid who's desperate for a job and money. Millie has to deal with the mental and physical gymnastics of working for Nina Winchester who seems hell-bent in making her life miserable. It's already quiet challenging to surprise or impress me when it comes to plot twists in a thriller book because I've already read quite a lot. However, The Housemaid took me by surprise with the second half of the book. While I had some gripe about the main character being naive and uncharacteristically stupid at times, I had a lot of fun reading this book. So the book is told in two POVs. The first one is Mary's and the second one is Nina's. So I found the second half of the book more gripping story-wise while the first half with Millie's perspective more compelling when it comes to the pacing. The ending was interesting because aside from getting a satisfying conclusion to the story, there's a hint on the possibility of a sequel and getting more out of Millie's story. Then I found out that there is a sequel to this series and I'll definitely read it. The next book that I read for March was My Year of Rest and Relaxation. It's a very palpable and distressing story about an unnamed protagonist who quite literally wants to sleep. 24-7 for a whole year. While it may seem trite when summarized that way, actually reading it gives more context on why our main character was feeling this way. The book dives into her childhood experience and how she didn't feel loved and cared for by her parents and how this affected her future relationships with others and herself as she grew up. The writing was so descriptive yet written in a monotonic and stream of consciousness way that you'd also feel like you're falling into a depressive hole as you read from the POV of the main character. I didn't particularly like being inside her head but I'm sure that's how the author intended it to evoke feelings from adults and young adults going through the same shit, going through the same existential dread. One thing I liked about this book is that the main character recognizes the privilege that she has has to be able to rot in bed for a whole year without the consequences of 
having to hustle and pay your bills. Although it's an exploratory book about one's existence and the lack of drive to live, it didn't really do much for me aside from the occasional reflection about my own life. And that's it friends and strangers, those were my first quarterly reads. I was able to read two for January, two for Feb, and three for March. And I'm really hoping to be able to read more in the coming months even though I get really busy with work and with life. Let me know if you've read any of these books, what are your thoughts about them, then I'll see you on my next video. Bye-bye.